hell are you doing to my lieutenant? You damn human! Don't you want to have to Oh my god. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's React. I'm Kenny, this is Montana, and this is Cheyenne. And today we're going to be reacting to episode 54 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Beyond the Inferno. Cheyenne had to join us for this epic episode. Because mm -hmm. she's a professional. Enjoyer. That's it. Yes, yeah. that's it. She's just a professional, <laughs> yeah. just generally. Yeah. Last episode, we saw Mustang absolutely obliterating Envy, taking his time. And really then, dragging it out. Yeah, and then he comes face to face with Hawkeye. They start walking together, but... Something seems awry. Sorry, something seems afoot. What are your thoughts on during this episode? Why are we speaking like a fucking peasant from the 14th century? Because maybe that's Things are I'm awry right. and afoot. They're awry and afoot, in fact. The fact that it's Envy, who now is less powerful than just a puny little human. Not gonna be good. That's a lot to be envious about. If you were excited for this episode, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and check out the Patreon link in the description below to see episodes early, including these these episodes all post in their extended uncut forms. Are we excited for episode 54 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Absolutely. All right, let's get it. Let's go. Heads. This video was brought to you by the incredible members of the Let's React Patreon. If you want access to a ton of exclusive perks, check out the link in the description below. Have a good day, Twinkle Toes! Back in Ishval, I guess. Aren't you going back? You'll be left behind. Who's that? A war buddy? No, it's... it's an Ishvalan child. One left dead with nowhere to call home. Let's go. The war is over now. The fighting may be, but the nightmares of what we did in this place are far from over. They'll stay with me for as long as I live. I believed in you. Trusted you with my father's research. Ooh. That tattoo is so surprising and I every to the single military time. Academy because I hope to help other wow. people. The way things turned out, it's not what I wanted. They didn't help at all. But there's mm -hmm. no escaping the truth. I can never atone for the suffering I've caused. I have a favor to ask, Mustang. Please burn this off. To face my back. Uh, how could I ever do something? At least... I may not ever be able to atone, but at least I can destroy the secrets on my back. There can be no more flame alchemists. Wow. Wow. That can explains the burns. Say, I need you to burn me if because so, there can't be any more of you. It's interesting. Using the thing that yeah, will you use you your power that I'm trying to get rid of? Wow! Please, set me free from his alchemy. I'm begging you. All right. Oh, I'll leave as little trace as I can. That's not going to feel nice. <laughs> Thank you. Episode 54, Beyond the Inferno. Yeah. All right. Well, got him at gunpoint. This is terrible. It really is envy. Why is he is waiting? A little bit. To maybe just drag it out. Doing, Candidate for sacrifice. Do you know who your guns pointed at? Huh, who? Don't make me laugh. When it's just us, the colonel calls me by my first name, Reza. <gasps> oh, he's yes. So you two are that close, are you? Whoa, it uh, was him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. That was smart. You were that was so smart. smart. Nice you to fall for it, Envy. Genius. And now you can do me the favor of dying. Yeah. 
He's got to be low on health. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh, fuck. I hate knees. That's a heavy artillery. Yeah, for real. You are really annoyed with that thing! Oh, no. Ooh. <gasps> One little flame yeah. can get her. Oh my god. I really don't like that he's taking his time. He needs to end it quick. More for practicality than anything. What in the hell are you doing to my lieutenant? That was so smart that you called that? Wow. Don't interfere. I mean, I kind of got it backwards, but... I told you I would no, you said at one point, maybe I, no, Mustang I, is Envy. Yeah. Mustang is Envy's Mustang now. No, it came up, but it was not my first thought. But it, it doesn't have to be. You guessed it, and I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't interfere, Lieutenant. I told you I would take care of him myself. You don't think she interfered to stop him from this path of vengeance? You damn human! Don't you underestimate me! Oh my god. Oh my god. I've never seen him snap this much. Whoa. It does live there. Or maybe not. Maybe it just exits there. Him. She would shoot him if he was going too far. I can't obey that. Put your hand down. Damn it! I won't ask again. <gasps> Who did alcohol? Oh, I was like, what? Uh, full metal. I'll be taking that. <laughs> that is an order. Give it to me right now. No, I won't. What? Come on, we need Mustang to turn back here. That thing deserves the worst death possible. Is Scar gonna help him through his no. philosophy? Give him to me, or I'll burn up your hand along with him! Try it then! If it's a fight you want, fine! But first, maybe you should take a good look at your face! Is that the face you plan to wear when you're leading this country? Well, is it? Is that what you want to be, Colonel? Another monster? And then, in turn, they'll protect the ones they love. It seems like the least we tiny humans can do for each other. Don't say tiny humans. You've got my support, <laughs> but you could have just asked me. It ought to be fun to watch, though. And maybe it might even do some good. <laughs> Are you becoming a beast? Giving in to its passion? You can if you want to. I won't stop you from giving in to revenge. Hey! What right do I have to stop someone from taking vengeance? But still, I shudder to think what kind of world a man held captive by his own hate would create once he becomes its ruler. 
Ooh. Colonel, I can't let you kill him. That being said, I have no intention of letting him live. I'll dispose of him. But I did it. I finally ran him down. I know that, but still. But It'll still, send him too far. You're about to do something reckless. This will not help, not your country or your friends. Take yeah. yourself out. Mm -hmm. This is pure hatred, and I will not let it take you. Yeah, this wasn't for you're anybody. Better. I know you're better than that. intention of carrying on by myself this fight will be my last oh once all of this is over i'm going to end my life and remove Whoa. my secrets of flame alchemy from the world <clears throat> that can't happen i can't i can't afford to lose you that was him releasing his hatred wow Madness is this. Scolded by a child. Lectured by a man who has been my enemy. And you. I've done it again. I've hurt you. How foolish can one man be? Okay, he's back. Good. But what's gonna happen to Envy here? What are we doing? Yeah. Wow. Are you a moron? Some nice flowery words and feigned empathy? You make me sick to my stomach. Are you humans always such pathetic worms? Why can't you just listen to your gut and do what you want to? Colonel Mustang, have you forgotten? Your pal Scar here was going to kill you. And what's more, wasn't he the one that killed the parents of the Pipsqueak's girly friend? Oh yeah! And what about that little girl who became a chimera? Scar was the one responsible for her death, too. And as for you, have you completely forgotten your hatred for what they did to your Ishbalan countrymen? Envy and thinks he can just woman, turn them, but they've all the kind of moved past her. this. voice is annoying as hell. Yeah. There's no way. No. No, you can't. Never. Never. It's impossible. How could you? How could you do it? Now I see. <laughs> You're jealous. You're jealous of humans, are you? What? We humans. According to you, we're supposed to be nothing when compared to homunculi. And yet, when we're beaten down, when we stray and fall, we face the challenge again and again. Our loved ones are always there to pick us back up. And you're jealous. You envy us because of that. Boo! You just have to forsake one little village to save an entire country. Too bad you don't have the stomach to do the logical thing. Can you He's really envy such a sad face? Can you, boy? 
<laughs> I shouldn't be surprised. That's just how all you humans are. Ooh. This time around, I'll go with a younger, cuter model. This is what do you so say? interesting. You humans don't make any sense to me. You throw away your lives for nothing. Another foolish you. What is second. happening here? Idiot, what? where are you going? Now! <laughs> Wait. He won't last long. Are we willing to risk that? Yeah. yeah. Ending up so pathetic like this. Trampled on by humans. Those loaves of beans. We useless people. And he's way bigger than him now. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> Calling him the Pipsqueak. <laughs> I hope we're not supposed to feel bad for Envy here. Because... No. Definitely don't. No. That's what's going to kill Envy. <laughs> I guess we'll see how long this adorable little alliance of yours can hold up. Oh, well, <sighs> best of luck with that tip um. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. So the end of Envy ended up being Goodbye. his Envy. Wow. So he's been jealous of humans this whole time? What do you think? That's crazy. I mean, how on brand is that? Yeah. He took the easy way out and killed himself. All the laughing just guised his true intention. Hmm. All right, so that was the end wow. of Envy. What are your thoughts? And also, what do you think of Envy dying by getting pointed out that he's jealous of humans? I feel like the ultimate nail in the coffin for someone who genuinely believes they're so superior to be informed and kind of found out to have been jealous of something that he felt he was so superior to is just... Or had portrayed that he was so superior yeah. to. Like, mm -hmm. it's now looking back at all of his laughing and him not caring, it Such was a him farce. caring. It yeah. was him completely caring. Yeah. Wow. We've talked about how we think most homunculi are going to die by their sin. So that was like yeah. such a fitting end. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's fascinating too that his real form is a big green monster, but he turns himself to look like a human. He's so envious. He made his oh own God, perfect so... abs, perfect arms, just made a perfect human body for himself. That's so interesting. And that you're explains so right. why when he died originally with Marco, he's like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. He kept saying that when he jumped out. Quit looking at me. Wow. Wow. That was amazing. Nice. Wait, they didn't say that? Full metal. Full metal alchemist. They didn't do it because Envy's dead. That's fascinating. They... Have they done that before? No. Full metal alchemist. How is he so fast? Yeah. Still moving. He doesn't look so good. Yeah. Vile. Monster. What is that thing? Come on, get over here. Give us a hand. Give you Where's a hand. Alien? No, we can't do that. We're under orders to kill General Armstrong. General! Major! 
You're here just in time. Still From sure this point on, I'll be running the show. Help us out or we all die. <laughs> it's a great it's motivator. Great, I mean. Yes, ma'am. Also, turning your back to sloth maybe isn't that deal. Maybe. Oh. 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 Is that a paintball gun? Bullets or no, they're no blood screen. Yeah. Okay. Go their upper jaws. If we Good thing she has a sword. Those, at least we won't be eaten. Oh. Smart. Attack in pairs and take out at least one. Get ready to fight central soldiers. What a Show great leader. Courage, men. Well, okay, I'm obsessed with her. Kill the woman general. Okay. Hell yeah. That was handy. Oh. Okay. Oh. This would be so much easier if I could use both arms. <laughs> Good lord. Oh no. Oh Jesus. Leave him! That's my brother! He's trained better than to be killed like this! Looking for an opening. It's the end! Oh! He got a pick back in place! <laughs> <laughs> That was like Mr. Uh, Mr. Incredible. Yeah. Little chiropractor. My shoulder is bad. <laughs> nice. I think saying that's my brother as a reason not to go help him is just the most accurate way of describing their relationship, <laughs> maybe of all time. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. <sighs> I'm a favorite team. If you can see it from the front, so you can see it from the back. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. My incredible strength and the art of my alchemy work beautifully together. You'll find the two to be an uncomfortable combination. Okay, All right. that was fantastic. That was I am obsessed with big guy brawls, like just yeah. powerhouse. What do you mean by that? Just <laughs> two powerhouses just fighting and just punching each other. Definitely combat. <laughs> Don't give me that look. I just really like fighting. <laughs> that was cool. And that's the that's estate right. of... The Olivier. Armstrong mm -hmm. estate is completely empty. Damn it. Is this where they assembled that blasted tank? <laughs> that was so smart. And they set up the fact that they're making tanks like back when we went and visited the this is base. The gate commander! Mm -hmm. Calling operations! We're taking fire from what we believe is a Briggs tank! Come in, operations! Stop shouting! I can see! No matter! Return fire! But the civilians haven't left yet, sir! And if we wait, we're guaranteed to lose the main gate! Get a move on! Tell the main battery! <laughs> this guy... Dang, not very good at that? what he does. Uh, oh. So you plan to open fire on a populated area. Do you want that info to go out over the radio, too? This equipment is for bricks. How did you get it here? A man formerly from Command Center One who has a rather sharp memory pointed us to the exact the location. Bishop. And after Hell that, yeah. getting in was a piece of cake, really. We yes. just had to find someone to dig a tunnel. Who could I like when the ends of episodes like have this music. Would you like yep. me to introduce you to her? Who in the When people ask, I say I'm a housewife. It does make sense. Let's go. But today, I've shed that particular disguise. I am Hell an yeah. She's a Yay! 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 Different oh, outro. Yeah. But also, yeah, okay, before we watch the outro, I do want to say a uh, great entrance there. Mm -hmm. I am an alchemist. I don't know why that made me so happy.
just owning it yeah. after so long. Mm-hmm. By the way, when I showed you that shot of them coming out of the gate at the Briggs estate, like remember I showed you earlier, there, I was yeah. like, look who that, that was Izumi. Because they showed her flip-flops of the WC on them. Gotcha. And I, I didn't know what that was. I was okay, like, very cool. who wears flip-flops? But taking down like the leader of this supposed like resistance, and they're finally going to get to father, I feel like. Yeah. Which might be what this different outro might be representing. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to go ahead and watch it. Is that Wrath? No. Oh, not. Wow. I expected you would bring those boys of yours along with you. What help do I need from children when I'm dealing with something as lowly as you? You're still a dwarf in a flask, homunculus. Wow. And you're still slave number 23, aren't you? You gave me part of your body. Today, all these many years later, you will become a part of mine. What? Part of his body? What does that mean? Huh. That's our first hint. He's making a new body and he's going to resorb them. He said it's part of it. That is fascinating. Mm-hmm. One is all, all is one. Extraordinary. Who is he? He's my husband. No, <laughs> no. Respectable <laughs> muscle. No way. Best thing in the game. Oh my God. Are they going to? So that was episode 54 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. What a great episode. I think it's important to note that when NB was like in his little like slug form and he tried to turn everyone against each other, yeah. he brought up like if there was going to be a way to turn them against each other, he brought up the only thing that would and mm-hmm. it still didn't. Yeah. Which makes me have a lot more. Not that I didn't have faith in their like group before, but they're just all such different people coming from such different places and backgrounds and different motivations motivations that I was concerned about how that situation was going to go, but wasn't even enough. So yeah, totally. What's becoming clear is that as the threat of the homunculi rises, the resolve of humanity is kind of equally rising. Thank you for watching and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below if you enjoyed that episode and check out the Patreon link in the description below to see episodes early, including these episodes all post in their extended uncut forms. We have a lot to discuss before we do that, where we headed. All right, let's review. Miss Sunflower 94 asks, what are your thoughts on Envy's death and what it says about his particular sin? We talked about it a bit earlier, but just Mm -hmm. sort of like now that we've had time to gather our thoughts, finish the scene, just. Yeah, I mean, I think we like we talked about what it meant, like specifically for that character. But I also think just like big picture wise, I feel like it's generally pretty accurate that the people who believe that they are so much better or project this belief that they are so superior to everyone else quite frequently that stems from just being very, very jealous, which I mean, like that was always the thing that that was always like what adults would tell you when you were a kid. It was like, oh, if they're jealous of you, it's it, it's like, oh, well, they're, you know, being mean to you and, you know, saying they don't want to hang out with you because they're too cool for you but it's actually because they see that you have a whole like loving family that comes to all of your events and like yep. no one's ever been to their like soccer match or whatever yeah. where it's the mask envy or jealousy is just a reflection of deep deep insecurity and it's a lot of times kind of the inverse of what they pretend yeah and it, at every turn we saw like when envy would be back in court be like don't look at me don't look at me exactly like, it was all insecurity and then the way that they just just had this continuous shot of his eye as the quotes from what he had said throughout the show played Mm -hmm. just like illustrating that like he was like laughing about it but it was just all like it felt very well constructed to have all the like masked statements with the unmasked envy's eye right there Mm -hmm. like just to be like this is what he was thinking when he was saying those totally. things. So I don't know the way he like it was a very fitting end. And like, I didn't expect it to be that like philosophical. It was really mm-hmm. just like I was wondering how they were going to get out of that scene with Envy dying and none of them killing him because it would feel weird. Even if like Hawkeye offered to kill him, and that would have been fine. But it would have been weird for Hawkeye just to shoot him. Like it would have mm-hmm. kind of defeated what she was trying to explain. Yeah. Well, she did say she was going to like take him and dispose of him. So it wouldn't have been like a in that area thing. I think she was going to like. I know. I, I think that. Else. No, I think she was saying, like, I have no problem killing him and I will right here. I'm just saying oh. you're doing it for the wrong reason. Gotcha. But what I'm saying is, like, I 
thought there had to be a way for him to die otherwise, and him pulling his own stone out was like just a very fitting in because he's so jealous. He can't even now that he's been pointed out, like, and he's so embarrassed. That's what he said. How embarrassing! Like that's the thing about jealousy. If you get called out on it, it's like like it's out. so embarrassing. Well, because then it just it like exposes you as a fraud, but it's also just like you, look you pathetic. kept up this. You look pathetic. Like someone else having more than you is so upsetting to you. Okay, I'm just like it, it should have been obvious, but wow. Of course he turned into all of these different humans. He wanted to be one. So yeah. he was like finding ways to just imitate other people because he was so mm-hmm. envious of them. Mm-hmm. That was such a well Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Wow. I'd say right now the least accurate homunculi would have to be lust other because the I thought it was like sloth for a while, but now I kind of get that one. But I think lust would be the only one. Well, because like she was lust because she's like hot, but like I they're feel not like, going to have her go just try to bang everybody. Exactly. Like, like it's not like, oh, you know, she's in this like... <laughs> situation and you know she could do the right thing to save the world but you know because she's so lustful like she's gonna go do something like that and it's not a kid's show um (laughs) Um, but uh yeah that's yeah so that was out of the homunculi i think envy has risen pretty far in terms of like just how the story went i was like where's the envy and now that just makes it so clear Mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to to rewatch knowing that totally um but anyway uh let's go to our second question all right cosmotron asks in this episode no one disputed that envy needed to die just that mustang motive and means were wrong. What are your thoughts on how the show handles the idea of killing in the name of revenge? And how does it differ from the way it views other kinds of killing? Yeah, that's the fascinating thing. There's like several levels of morality in the show. I'd say the top moral people are Ed and Al. Mm -hmm. Like they just, for some reason, they just can't bring themselves to kill anything in any capacity besides stones. But even then they had to have their arms twisted in like a really big way morally. Mm -hmm. Um, But then below that, there's a tier of people that will that will kill out of necessity like the Briggs people that mm-hmm. are fighting right now, they're, they're killing soldiers because they, they need to because they're in the middle of a fight. Yeah. So that's justified. Like it's self-defense. Yeah. And or it's then, like a them or us situation. Exactly. And then there's another tier where it's Mustangs people who injure everybody and are, oh, sorry, they're above them. They just injure people. They don't kill them. Mm-hmm. But like even them being, Mustang being driven to that point, and the fact that he went through this whole fight only injuring people and then gets to this place and switches on the kill switch like it was fascinating to see them all talk him down because they're all I think they've all been impacted by honestly hanging out with Ed and Al mm-hmm. and like adopting their sort of ideas but as to what the specific question said it's fascinating that like when he killed Lust Hawkeye wouldn't bat an eye like mm-hmm. she was right there yeah. but it, but the second that it became clear it was anger and he was taking his time with it you could see Ed was feeling weird about it like they all were and the way they talked him down like it like it's fascinating to have a scene where they're like you can't kill him we will but if you do for this reason you can never come back from that just the idea that somehow the morality shifts when the intention does when typically intention doesn't matter compared to impact yeah but this was one situation where intention really did matter and i don't know the the, the perspective they each took for talking him down it was hawkeye saying like you promised me you wouldn't use this flame alchemy this way it was scar being like I have no reason to stop you from revenge, but imagine how good of a leader you'd be if you could have had revenge and then you chose not to. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like they all went at different parts of his psyche and then seeing him throw away the flame to the side to get rid of his anger, like because they each did have a good, mm-hmm. unique perspective to offer him because totally. they one was in Ishval, one was a victim of Ishval, and the other one has just seen and felt tragedy his whole life. Like it's just, I don't know, I really love the way that they talked him down. The killing is very contextual in the show, and I think it matters based on the scene and who's doing it and for what reason. What are your thoughts? Just the way the whole thing was set up is just such a cool, interesting example of like, it's not the action, but the intention behind the action or the motivation for the action that, I mean, it obviously like it doesn't impact the like objective result, like the person like envy was going to die regardless. But in terms of like how your actions affect you moving forward and I guess just the idea of being in that situation and instead of 
of being so angry that you throw away your future and completely screw yourself and stop yourself from being able to help other people because you are so angry at this one being that you're willing to throw away helping all those people just because you're mad and then realizing what kind of person that would make you if you were to do that. Yeah. Because I feel like it's a pretty common thing for people in those situations to just want to exact revenge as much as they possibly can. And while that's understandable, he's not worth it. Like, envy is so not worth sending him back. Mustang, like, going back to his Ishval and War. Yeah, just completely like contaminating everything he's worked so hard to build. And so thinking about it in that context of like, I'm not like going easy on my enemy. I'm recognizing that lowering myself to that is not worth it. Um, Beyond the Inferno. Yeah. That would have been a title for the episode. Yeah. Like it's, he kind of had to get out of that because Mm -hmm. if if he lowered himself down, if he lowers himself to that level and then becomes the peak of the government, where does that leave the rest of the government? Yeah. You're only no way to go but down. Very true. But uh, yeah, good thing that they talked him out of it. And uh, hopefully he will not go back there moving forward. All right, let's go to our final question. Adam B. asks, aside from that incredibly badass line, what are your thoughts on the significance of the way Izumi introduces herself now, an alchemist, as opposed to how she always introduced herself in the past, a housewife? That's a distinctive shift. Mm-hmm. There are just so many different things that that could represent. I have an idea. All right. I, so... I'm answering this first because Montana is still ruminating, but my thought is um, she tried to bring back her baby through human transmutation. It failed and her insides were messed up. And I think probably ever since then, she was like, I'm a housewife. I'm not an alchemist. I'm not an alchemist. Like, cause she broke that thing and felt so yeah. bad about it. Mm-hmm. After Ed calling her and saying, that wasn't your baby that you brought back. She, he didn't have to suffer again. And Hohenheim rearranging her insides and saying, it wasn't your fault. People have done this. Like, you can only move forward. Like, I think those interactions have led her to be like, you know what? No, I'm going to be, I'm an alchemist. I'm yeah. not, I'm just no kind of longer going to hide her from power. Her. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Because the guilt must have just been eating away at her. Mm-hmm. Literally, literally, it was like in her stomach. Like, yeah. it's interesting that she lost her insides and then retreated. Like, it yeah. like, feels like a metaphor. Mm-hmm. I think there's an aspect of it that's like, that hesitation to label yourself is a reflection of you not being confident in your abilities. And I mean, like, how could you be after yeah. everything that happened there? So then coming back and like owning that title after all of these like new revelations have been discovered, it just feels like a new start for her and like a new identity. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, and if we've been seeing only like the held back version of Azumi, exactly. I'm excited to see the just blossoming Izumi you totally know? especially since like I feel like that scene where Hohenheim like reconstructed her like pa- airway I feel like that actually is going to be a big help mm-hmm. yeah so uh, it's going to be great to see her back in action in addition to everybody else but also we didn't discuss it very much but uh that concerning information about father yeah potentially making a new body out of Ho- like Hohenheim Al Ed Izumi and maybe Mustang like he maybe he's trying to resorb them because something I noticed is that his hair was a lighter color than Hohenheim so I think his leather bag body is degrading faster than Hohenheim's because Uh, his soul isn't compatible with it since it's not it's not quite his body interesting I see it and I think I just figured it out sorry I just figured it out okay imagine that Al is a dwarf in a flask but the flask is the armor okay um he's been searching for his body this entire show that's his one objective Mm -hmm. correct imagine you're in that situation and you don't have a body to go get you're gonna try to make one and I think that he's not just trying to copy somebody else splice it I think he's trying to make a unique singular body to him like he's Mm -hmm. like I want to maybe he's gonna ask to be human like I I I don't quite know but I it feels like that's the answer and the other thing that makes me think is potentially the only reason he can do alchemy is because he's got the stone and maybe he can't do regular alchemy because he's not a human I don't Mm -hmm. know but uh, that's just my thought. That's about it for this episode. Are we excited for episode 55 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Can't wait. All right, let's get it. Let's go. 